Heidi ho I'm Uno Clay from Philadelphia, and I support Gen X Grown Up on Patreon. In a world torn apart by angry pundits and ceaselessly acerbic news, the cheerful tone of Gen X Grown Up is always a welcome escape, not to mention endlessly entertaining, and sometimes even informative. If you want to support the show too, click on genxgrownup.com slash Patreon and toss them a couple bucks. It's the guaranteed way to gain the respect of your peers and immediate promotions at work. Not guaranteed in all 50 states. Some employers may see fit to demote you, and your peers will probably find you weird and distasteful. Results may vary. You are warned. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown-up? Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel, website, and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listener, to this episode 114 of the Gen X Grown Up Podcast. I am John. Joining me as always is George. Hey, how's it going, guys? You know the Mo is here. Hey, everybody. We are recording this here at the very end of the year. It's the day before Christmas for us. You're going to hear it the day before New Year's, New Year's Eve, <laughs> I guess. But boy, we, it has been a hell of a long year as we round out this year. In this episode, we're going to watch Spider-Man's triumphant return to the big screen in No Way Home, review a power powerhouse graphics card that can make a beast out of your gaming PC and play an updated version of a 1979 Atari arcade classic. Cool. Before we get into those topics and many more, though, it is time for a fourth listener email. And the fourth listener email this time around actually got to us by way of Apple Podcasts in the form of a review. Awesome. Ah. <laughs> you went a long way around to yeah. get to the to get that, to that point. Yeah. Review. <laughs> <laughs> it is, right. Well, it, it kind of is. It's a really long review which I loved, and there are a lot of points to talk about, so we're just going to highlight that as the review. Uh, this review left by Kaosian. Apologize if I misspelled your name. It's K-H-A-O, Kaosian. I think it's Chaosian. Chaosian? Maybe it's Chaosian. Oh, ah, Chaosian. That makes sense. Well, okay. that, that could work. Put chaos in there. All right, it's with a K, though. Anyway, the subject line <laughs> is Gen X Grown Up, a real Thursday morning treat. Five mm. stars, Whoa. gentlemen. Oh, wow. okay. No wonder we're reading it. <laughs> I actually read them all, whether they're five stars or not, but this one, in fact... Is five stars. Uh, so here's what Cassian, Chaosian, the K Man, had to say. <laughs> the K Man. <laughs> Throw a nickname out there. These guys really do mesh together and make for around a whole commute to work about an hour every Thursday. I've been listening to these guys for almost three years now and finally decided to at least leave a review. Awesome. <laughs> Hey, that's cool. We'd said a few episodes ago, yeah. it's never too late. A longtime listener who we talked to finally dropped a review like a month ago. So yep. it's never took too me late. me three years to figure out the Apple podcast platform to leave a review anyway. So I don't yeah, blame Yeah, it is a pain in the ass. No sure. one would blame you for that. No. It goes on to say, I'm about as far away from them as I can be and still in the same country. I live in Alaska. Holy uh -huh. cow. Yeah. yeah. Key West may be the only thing I can think of further, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a different world. Holy cow. But the nostalgia this show brings on my commutes at least brightens my day every time. Not to mention how much money I've spent after listening to the reviews on products. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We have that effect on people. People we have heard. Yep. Parenthetically, he says, I actually love my Creality printer and I actually got a working Skytech PC. Oh, Poor George. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have the finale of that Skytech saga, maybe in this episode. We're going to oh, hear a little we'll bit. See. Something's happening. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I need to find my way over to Patreon at some point, as I feel I owe it to them for the lighthearted entertainment they bring into my life. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. Being considered one of the essential workers throughout the pandemic made for some lonely drives into Anchorage. I can't thank these guys enough. Forever. That's F-O-U-R dash ever. A fourth <laughs> listener. <laughs> and remember, these reviews are like addressed to people who might listen to the show. And so to to that reader, he says, if you missed out on this one, then you owe it to yourself to go through the back catalog and hear some of these episodes. I definitely suggest the Dewey Decimal episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I man. don't know what it is about that one, but it was an odd one for sure. <laughs> it's just it's gonna go down in Gen X grown up history. If we ever do get super famous and red carpet walking and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. they're still gonna be talking about Dewey Decimal system. That'll be the one that wants to reenact for the motion picture. Right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> librarians across the country will love us. Oh, yeah. Do we not have an endorsement yet from the Library Association of America or something like that? <laughs> is there one? <laughs> I, if there is, we should have an endorsement from them. <laughs> they thought about it, but then they heard the episode and then decided probably uh, thought better of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a absolutely generous review. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Chaosian? Chaosian? Awesome. Thank you so much for that review. Uh, listen, hey, if you have not yet dropped a review, have, head over to Apple Podcasts or you know Stitcher or wherever it is that you listen. We sure would appreciate it. It helps other people find our show. Tell them what you think about us. Or you can drop us a line at podcast at genxgrownup.com. We read every single email and most of them eventually make the show. All right. On this last regular show of 2021, we're going to get into it right after this break. Stick around. On October 5th, Loki is back in a brand new season. Reunited. That's right. The countdown is on. I've been waiting. Don't miss the return of Marvel's most watched Disney Plus show. Loki. 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 A little over the top, don't you think? I thought it was spot on. His time is running out. You the hero! Marvel Studios Loki Season 2. New episodes streaming October 5th, only on Disney Plus. Be sure to subscribe to or follow Gen X Grown Up wherever you listen. And while you're there, rate and review the show too. It helps more than you know. As dawn's early light covers the sleeping Tempkins, a pasty film covers their mouths. Morning! <laughs> they wake with the worst breath of the day. Morning. Morning. Scope anyone? We'll use ours. Mom, that leaves your breath medicine-y. Scope's minty. Ours kills germs. Scope kills germs. No kidding. Try. <sighs> minty fresh. And kills, kills germs. germs. <laughs> Morning. Fight bad breath with Scope. Now in lightweight, shatterproof plastic. Let's get this last media segment of the year underway, talking about what we have been watching since we last spoke. Of course, it could be TV or film or movies or books or comics, or whatever it is. Uh, and George, I want to start with you. This is something that may have actually resurrected the theater industry. Spider-Man No Way Home, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, well, Gee, I mean, I honestly don't know the numbers. I haven't paid attention to those, but... I would guess from my experience that the numbers are fairly high on mm -hmm. this film. I read it's like the second, second or largest, third best, yeah, like just biggest behind Endgame or something. or something. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Despite the pandemic. Everybody was anticipating this film because of a lot of different things that came out over the last few months with the trailers and mm -hmm. all the time rift stuff in the alternate universe, which is something that Marvel Universe hasn't done a lot of in their films mm -hmm. yet. They haven't, you know, talked mm -hmm. about the multiverse that often so this is kind of the first real big foray into that <laughs> well they're fixing that now because it's they everywhere. are fixing it um <laughs> I, again we're not going to give a whole lot of spoilers because we want you guys to be able to go and experience this movie on your own terms if you mm -hmm. have but i will say this was the first of these I want to call them elongated movies. If you noticed lately, the 90 minute movie is kind of becoming a thing of the past. Movies are steadily becoming two hour affairs on average. Mm -hmm. And this one was way further than that. Like I think we were away from the house for over three and a half hours. I don't know mm -hmm. what the runtime is on the movie, but it felt like a three hour movie. It was nearly two and a half. Yeah. 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 It was two and a half hours. Almost yeah. two and a half. Well, they did that with the James Bond film. They've mm -hmm. done a lot like big feature pieces. The ones that are like cornerstones of, you know, they absolutely said, I had to make it long get it. Yeah. And that's yeah, okay yeah, with me. Too. It <laughs> is. Good. And this was the first one of those uh, longer feature films that didn't make me feel like I was worn out at the end of it. Like mm -hmm. when I went to see the James Bond, movie that three hours worth i got done with that and i'm like whoo i'm tired i need to go yeah. home and rest <laughs> but this movie the pacing was so strong in this movie it moved it flowed mm. the yeah. edits were beautiful cinematics visuals everything in this thing was gorgeous i was like at the end of the film even the credits and walking all the way through the credit scene which i will say one thing that's a little spoilerish the second credit scene is less of a credit scene and more of a trailer Absolutely. it's just a trailer it's a movie i said trailer. the same thing that's yeah. yeah weird yeah yeah but it it's solidly good i really enjoyed how they how they brought all these elements that we've seen in the trailers together. I'm not going to spoil who's in this mm -hmm. movie. We do know some of the people. You know Green Goblin is in it from the trailer. You mm -hmm. know okay. Sandman is in it from the trailer. You know Doc Ock is You know Ock Electro is, there. is yeah. in it from the trailer. Yeah, I mean, the yeah, but there are plenty of other appearances in this that make this movie special. To me, my favorite 
special guest appearance, uh, unplanned. I had no idea it was coming. Was within the first ten minutes of the movie. Was it? Was it? I'm just gonna say it was of legal origin. That's all I'm gonna say. Of legal origin. That's good. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was very cool. Yeah, especially yeah. because of what type of crossover that was. That right. was yes, completely unexpected yep. because that question has been out there in the Marvel Universe fandom mm-hmm. for years. Oh yeah. When are we going to see these these people? worlds merge? basically yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. So, and actually there was a rumor is he or isn't he let's say it that way right yeah and apparently actually came out and said that he wasn't in it actually came mm. out and lied well of course why you wouldn't know, you say that <laughs> you know rather than being vague he just said nope you know but yeah it was excellent and, and i agree with you george i mean for a long movie it just went super fast and yeah mm-hmm. it was a very dense movie like it was a lot going on but i didn't feel overwhelmed it felt like an hour and a half film but it was two yeah. and a half hours a lot of stuff packed into it yeah but just so much packed in by like sometimes those movies get so much packed in you kind of feel like it's just too much you know it's mm-hmm. too much input at one time but this one i was like wow I, I followed the whole story i was totally with it it's actually i think my favorite of the spider-man movies for sure yeah i there's no reason this shouldn't be i think it's mm-hmm. great you know i was thinking when i was watching it that uh, it reminded me a little bit of our dune discussion where we talked about to really enjoy that dune film really helps if you knew about the dune universe already because they don't spoon feed you stuff and we were talking after this film about how how much fun we had and how great it was and i said but it's not as great if you're a young person that has not been watching Spider-Man films for 20 years because things that people in the audience cheered for, they're only cheering because they have history outside of the movie about mm-hmm. other movies in, in the series and previous series and stuff that really pay off. So I think it pays to have been a longtime invested Spider-Man film viewer. <laughs> and this really is, is like a crowning achievement for all those films in so many ways that was so gratifying. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Although I will say my youngest son who went with me to the movie that we saw, because I have two other sons who were planning on going to the movie with me, but then they backed out because they wanted to go play video games. Anyway, uh, (laughs) that's a whole other thing. (laughs) Understandable. My youngest son who went, he doesn't have the history that you're talking about with the Spider-Man universe, so to say. He only has the Marvel Cinematic Universe experiences, and that's still large. I, I was thinking about it the other day uh this particular actor who's played spider-man has played him more in more movies than any other actor that's played spider-man mm-hmm. previously he is yeah because he has his own films and then all the like the he marvel things that he own. has cameos in right he yeah. has the two avenger films yep. plus the captain america film mm-hmm. so he's got it six times at all over the yeah. place and yeah. i heard that he's contracted for a few more so uh, this kid yep. is doing a bang up job oh, yeah. but to your point earlier john my son who doesn't have those earlier spider-man history films in his belt he was cheering and clapping right alongside because he had done some research ahead of time he, he knew just people enough will well, go on good. youtube yeah. and yeah. twitter or whatever twitter versus things they go on to find out information these days he was right there with us as far as enjoying all the different things that popped up in this film that's yeah. good to know and also i think there was so much hype for i mean this movie was hype, been hyped for like two years now right mm-hmm. i mean we've been watching trailers and yep. talk about it I think at this point, everyone kind of figured that there was going to be a lot of crossover. So I would be surprised if people hadn't gone back and already watched those movies to prep for this, because mm-hmm. I, I can't see how people could have you know, missed that opportunity. But Right. I want to know the history of yeah. Otto Octavius. I want to know the history of right. the Green Goblin. I want to you know, right. I want to know that stuff, because you know they're coming back. It's like, oh, let me research and do this. So mm-hmm. maybe that did pay off, knowing just enough trickling out there. Uh, it was great. So yeah. I, I think we've all seen it, but George, this is, this is uh, your pick for our media segment. I want to know, as strong as this movie was, where this hits on your rating scales, both token wise and, and your AMC. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to preface it by saying the one thing that makes this movie so appealing to me is this is the uh, first time that I actually liked all of the Spider-Man villains. I didn't like the Spider-Man villains, even these same actors that played these Spider-Man villains in most of those earlier films. I didn't feel mm-hmm. like they were written very well. This film, I felt like every single Spider-Man villain that was in it hit the mark. And Mm -hmm. that's why I would absolutely give this on my AMC list, full price, Mm -hmm. Dolby, digital, whatever, the most expensive (laughs) ticket you can go grab. (laughs) Go Go see it. It's definitely worth it. Yeah, Yeah, On the token scale, a solid four and a half. I agree. Yeah. 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 
Got to take a little bit off for a couple of things here and there, but four and a half is, I think, a fair rating number for it. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I would agree. It was super. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to see it again. I might see it in the theater again. Yeah. It must be the first movie I see twice in the theater in, I can't remember the last time I saw something <laughs> yeah. twice in the theater. It was Wreck-It Ralph, probably. It was the last thing I saw twice in the theater. So otherwise, you see it once and then it's on DVD or streaming right. or whatever. But right. Yeah, really strong and a lot of fun. I can't remember the last time I was in a theater and people were cheering at the screen and clapping. Yeah. Thing. Same here. Yeah, that was cool. That was yeah, very cool. That, that tells you. So while we're at the theater, though, Mo, your pick also another sequel, also brand new in the theaters. What were you checking out? Yeah, so I actually went and saw The Matrix Resurrections. Oh, ah, lucky. Yeah. I go to see it tomorrow. And again, no spoilers here at all, but I liked it. I was really worried because I love the Matrix films. You know, a lot of people panned on the second and third one. I liked them all. I did too. I thought the first was still the best one, but I liked all three. It seemed like the story ended. They kind of lived a little open-ended. Like, okay, how are they going to do this? And I was trying to figure out where it's going to go. And I watched this movie. I was like, wow, I really enjoyed that. And it it Hmm. had that same kind of Matrix feel where like you see it once, you really enjoy it. But then you want to see it again because you want to catch stuff that you missed the first time because you know that unlike Spider-Man, there was a lot of stuff like a lot of subtle stuff going on and a lot of like little Hmm. symbolism and other things in the movie. So I really enjoyed it. So I want to ask you a question, Mo, because I I don't go to see this until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But the ending of the third Matrix film Mm -hmm. was fairly definite as far as Neo is concerned. Yes. Right? What they did in this movie with the story as far as how they reintroduced Neo and all the other characters, did it make sense at least or was it very contrived? Because that's my biggest fear with this film. It actually made sense. Okay. It didn't feel contrived. It wasn't what I was expecting, which I kind of liked because I was like, oh, they're going to do a blah, 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 or, you know, some crazy stuff. It was uh, interesting and I, I'm not going to say I 100% understood all of it, which is also why I want to see it again because like the first movie, you know, <laughs> I, I got a lot of it and I was like, well, let me watch it again just to be sure. But when I was in the theater, I never felt like, oh, please, you know, like that whole like, oh, okay. yeah, okay. He woke up in the shower is all a dream. I get it. You know, <laughs> they, didn't do the, they didn't do the Bobby from Dallas. Right. Exactly. No. All right. And also, I have to say one thing I just liked about this movie, and this is from a Gen X perspective, is that Keanu Reeves and the actress who plays um, Trinity's in it as well. Carrie Ann Moss. Carrie, right? Carrie, Carrie Moss. Thank you. Mm-hmm. They aged well. Like they're, they did, they look like the way they should be as far as age wise. You know, they look kind of like our age. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, they didn't over, like try to make them look super young or anything crazy like that. And I don't know, I guess the only reason why I'm thinking that is I see all these, a lot of these, especially actors and actresses who are like getting all the work done to make themselves look super young again and at mm-hmm. one of those Barbie doll faces and all that crazy and stuff. It's like, you know, I heard a review that said, I loved every line in both of their faces as far as like, you know, that they actually <laughs> age and stuff. And they both, I think, um, have also come a long way as far as being better actors and stuff. It was it was a great movie. I really enjoyed it. You know, the first films are really well known for the strides they took in uh, the visual craft mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. filmmaking. You know, the bullet time thing, which they didn't invent, but they became yep. famous for and used it well. Just the visuals that are so crazy and over the top. Did that play into this? Did they do anything groundbreaking? Is it more of the same? What, what, I mean, you talk about the story and the characters. What about the visuals? The thing that I think of when I think of The Matrix. Yeah, the visuals were, of course, great. <laughs> See, okay, I don't want to give it away, but I'll say that the things like the bullet time and stuff actually play into the story. Okay, oh. that's cool. And so you right. have to watch it to figure out how. Okay. But all that stuff actually played into the story, was actually part of the story. Okay. It was like funny and interesting. I was like, that's kind of funny, you know, that they did it that way. Cool. But they did have some new stuff that they do in there, of course, some new effects Good. and some other things. But nothing I would say like groundbreaking like the Matrix was. Yeah, you know, like Matrix just like the whole special effects, that was a whole nother level, right? That that changed <laughs> movies going forward. I don't know if this will change movies going forward, but they did some really cool stuff. I mean, if you have a film series and one of your films changes cinematic history, yeah. you're doing pretty good. So it's kind of hard to expect them to, <laughs> yeah, it is. to yeah. pull that off every time. So I, if as long as it's a beautiful film, yeah. I know the Wachowskis were still involved in this. Mm-hmm. So that's always a positive when you have the original people still involved. As long as all of those elements are there, I think I'm going to be happy. And from what you're saying, Mo, it sounds like I'm going yeah, to think enjoy you the be. heck out of this thing tomorrow. Yep. I think you will be. Cool. What about a rating for Matrix Resurrections? What do you think? Oh, rating? Um, I, again, because this is one. Okay, they did that stupid thing where they released it on HBO Max and the theaters the same day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I still think that's a stupid business idea right there. They should give it a week in the theaters. Give it some time in the theater, you know, a week or two or something. That's, but anyway, yeah. that being said. Now, how did you see it? You saw it in the theater, I saw though, it in the right? theater. I absolutely saw it in the theater. Okay, all right. I think you have to see it in the theater. And so I would rate this on, on the AMC scale. I would say it's a full price movie. Okay. I think really? it's totally okay. worth it to go see in the theater to get that theater feeling. I saw it on IMAX, actually. Okay. Yeah. And it was the sound. I mean, because, you know, it's it's a visual movie and it's hard to get that on a smaller TV. So I definitely say it's a full price movie just for that reason. Uh, as far as our scale, I would probably give this four tokens instead of four and a half. Okay. You really liked it. All right. Yeah, I liked it because, you know, it's not Spider-Man great. I really, really like that movie. But The Matrix, like, again, this is when I may go back and see in the theater again. Wow. There's another wow. one. Holy crap. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So that's what I got. So, you know, we got two big blockbuster movies. So, John, you can round this out with something cool. Uh, it's not a big blockbuster movie, <laughs> but it ought to be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if these are on your radar or not, but... The guys over at South Park, oh, Trey and Matt, made a deal with Paramount Plus to create some made-for-TV movies in the South Park universe. Ah. Oh, really? Keeping up on these? No. Okay, no. These could be garbage. Uh, they had two of them out now. Let me say they're not garbage, but they're even more than not garbage. S something really crazy happened in the second one. So they're on their second of their specials for Paramount Plus. They're both movies. They're like an hour long or so. What was the first one? The first one was called South Park Post COVID. All right. <laughs> okay. okay. That's it. Remember, they had the uh, episodes, they had the pandemic special. Yeah, that aired right, in right. South yeah, Park. Yeah, the pandemic right. special. I so one, I've yeah. missed a South Park offering. Is well, what it's you're kind of riffing me? off of that. So they had a movie called South Park Post COVID. So I missed that. And then a sequel that just came out called South Park Post COVID: The Return of COVID. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> so that's perfect. So think about the South Park large things. You had your Imagination Land, which is a three episode run. You had the Cartoon Wars, and of course you had the South Park Bigger Longer Uncut in the mm -hmm. theaters. They've done some big ambitious things with those South Park characters, and I've loved them all. And they did something here I I, I never expected to see. I never thought I would see. It's not that it's super revolutionary, but I didn't think I would see it really happen in the South Park universe. So yes, like always they're playing off of what's going on in modern culture, right? So the pandemic is the big deal. They're talking about that naturally. NFTs are a big thing. NFTs work their way in there. <laughs> Whatever's course. happening in the news, they have a great way of doing social commentary on it while poking fun, but also explaining it and making it very relatable. The first one of these that came out, the, the, the initial one of Paramount Plus, was pretty good. And the approach, there's no spoilers here. You can find this out in the trailer. The approach is they're all celebrating the end of COVID. Finally, it's over and finished. And they have you know snippets of newsreels, how everybody's getting back out and going to theaters again and everything. <laughs> and then the spoiler is that it's actually like 30 years later that COVID is finally over. And all of the boys are grown up men now. Ooh. What? What? Yes. Yes. And they have all moved on in their lives. You, you find out what Stan has been doing and what Holy Kyle cow. has been doing. You won't believe what Cartman's new role in life is. Oh, and Lord. Kenny McCormick became a just a rock star scientist and researcher. And he's recently passed away. And all the boys are coming back together in South Park. Wait, he passed away. Around the death of their friend. Oh. Well, Kenny died. <laughs> Duh, right? Well, there's no spoiler there. Yeah. <laughs> and that was cute. It was kind of a cliffhanger at the end of the second, the first one. So I was ready for the second one. That's cute looking forward to it the sequel to this south park return of covid thing yeah it's gonna blow you away if you really? love south park it's fun if you enjoyed that first little film with the kids grown up that's cool the second one in this series is absolutely amazing remember how you talked about how spider-man no way home is kind of even though it was long it didn't feel long mm -hmm. well this is a like it's maybe it's an hour hour 15 or something it's a long cartoon but it doesn't feel long because it's a nail biter all the way through. We're what? leaping back and forth in time. There's a science fiction movie going on in the middle of this. There's what happened. I'm not even going to talk. You, you see all the characters that you know, <laughs> right? Like, like Token. He's now the Token black policeman on the South Park PD. He's still, <laughs> he's still a Token, but he's a detective, right? And like everybody you know shows up in little roles. You know, Scott Malkinson shows up. He's where what he's doing. Everyone you ever knew in the South Park world. But the fact that they've wrapped it, what they turn this into a weird science fiction fiction metaverse kind of back and forth in time it's not a time travel but you see things happen and how they affect them 
and you'd said, George, did I miss some South Park? You did. And it's easy to miss if you don't have Paramount Plus. You're not aware of these things. But oh, my goodness. Well, and it sounds like it's it's definitely not part of the series. That's why my sonar application didn't go and grab the episodes. That's right. Absolutely right. I've got to put them in radar because they're movies. You got it. So neither of you have seen either of these, I'm guessing, right? No, I haven't seen either one. I didn't know they existed, to be honest. Wow, is it good. I'm a bit disappointed that you didn't tell us that they existed ahead of time. He's the first one. I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. I didn't get a chance (laughs) to tell you about it. There's so many things. You're right. The first one was okay, and I wasn't out there, you know, running down the street saying, you got to see this, people. But after the second one, oh, yeah. You riff off of everything you knew about Tegrity Farms and all the stuff (laughs) that his dad was doing with his weed business, and it all plays in. They they must be genius writers or have a genius writing style staff to fold all that stuff together in a way that made it all pay off like were they planning this all along i can't imagine but my goodness <laughs> did they make it seem like they were planning it all along it's such a good good bit so wow. if you have paramount plus you should check it out if you don't you should seek that out you know get a, get a <laughs> trial subscribe whatever it takes yeah the star trek is over if they like that stuff but yeah this south park thing is pretty damn cool you should definitely check it out very cool Hi, I'm Christina Yerling Biro, host of the podcast Pop Culture Confidential. Join me as I go way behind the scenes with some of the most influential people in entertainment and media. Hear actors such as Succession's Brian Cox talk about his favorite characters to play. There always has to be a mystery. The audience have to be in a situation where they want to know what's going on. Meet studio execs like Pixar chief Pete Docter and learn his secret on how he makes us cry. Emotion is our first language. And so many others who are defining popular culture, from Obama speechwriter David Litt to Top Chef host Padma Lakshmi. We don't often think about food politically or we don't want to, but it really is. Join me. Search for Pop Culture Confidential wherever you get your podcasts. Each episode of Gen X Grown Up has show notes loaded with links where you can learn more about our topics. And there's even more to see and hear over at GenXGrownUp.com. Holy smokes, what is this? It's a Pontiac Fiero GT. Good right, Irene. What is that? My new Firebird Trans Am. Can you dig it? Yes, I can, dude. Don't tell me you've got a Pontiac too. Uh-huh. Sunbird Turbo. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, it's really fun to drive if you're into Pontiac. Yeah, no problem. That's my Pontiac. 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 All right, I don't know about you guys, but I am so excited to find out, George, how your computer saga, um, epic <laughs> journey, uh, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to call it either. Yeah, I, know, <laughs> I have some choice words, but. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, is it. Are you there? Like, what's going on with that? Well, I mean, there is a relative term, I guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, so I think I'm pretty much at the end of all my trials and tribulations. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> I'm done Good. with SkyTech. I'll tell you that much. Oh, um, yeah. So I sent off the video card as we talked about last time and there was all this hubbub and all this crap about, oh, we have to hold it for two weeks while our team looks at it before we send you another one. And then, you know, of course, they're shipping it from wherever and it's going to take seven to 10 days or longer to get here. It was very frustrating. I finally did get it this past week. Okay. And the first thing I noticed as soon as I opened up the box, it was not the same video card that I had before, which kind of irritated me and pissed me off. And I'll tell you why. So these Radeon RX 6800 cards come Mm -hmm. in multiple configurations. Generally, I thought of video card multiple configurations as things like how much RAM it has on board or how many processing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. units it might have. Yeah. Now, these things are configured differently in the ports on the back panel, the output ports. And that really is irritating for somebody who has no control over what card is being sent to them. Now, if I was buying this card on my own, you know, building my own PC, of course Mm -hmm. I would have control over which one I was getting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I want HDMI or I want DisplayPort or whatever. Exactly. So the original card that I had that I've figured out now was from Ace Rock and it was their Phantom Gaming version of the Radeon RX 6800. Okay. Okay. They also apparently have another version called the Tachi X, and that's the one that I got this time. 
Difference hmm. between the two, the Phantom Gaming version has three Display Ports and one HDMI port. Oh, so plenty of configuration. You got four. So ports. you have to have an adapter to put two monitors generally. Yeah. Now the second one also supports four outputs. However, the outputs are configured this way. I now have two Display Ports instead of three. Uh huh. One HDMI port and one USB C output port. Huh. I. I'm not happy with that because I don't know what I'm going to use USB-C video output for. Maybe there's something I saw somebody on our Discord channel the other day talking about there's a way to go USB-C to USB-C for your Oculus gaming rig. So yeah. maybe mm-hmm. that's a mm-hmm. thing that they're building this card ah, for. Ah, okay. Yeah. But what I was most frustrated by was that Skytech, they knew which card I had because I sent it back to them. You're right. Mm-hmm. They had built it originally and they didn't send me the same thing back, even though it's out there. And by the way, Skytech, according to Amazon, the original one that you gave me, the Phantom Gaming one, is cheaper than the one you sent me this time. <laughs> so you could have saved yourself two or three hundred dollars and given me <laughs> what I wanted, what I had had originally i've been happy i wonder if it was just not available or, maybe they were yeah. thinking they gave you a more up-to-date one <sighs> maybe i, I say that I with a big know. question mark I mean, right maybe they were trying to satisfy you because they knew you were upset let's give them the upgraded one and then they accidentally upset you again <laughs> yeah <laughs> well and then there's the thing i think that i upset myself about maybe unfairly with this company so there was no support in taking this card out or putting this card back in. Like okay. they didn't say, Hey, let us schedule a session with you where one of our techs can walk you through what you need to do. Right. Because yep. there were several differences with this card. And if I didn't have any previous PC building experience, this card would still be sitting on a shelf because John, you know, with these mm-hmm. video cards, they have multiple power inputs, right? That's right. That's right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the original card I had had two power inputs and Mm -hmm. all the other power cables were tucked underneath these metal boxes inside the case to keep it looking clean. Yeah. Right. Well, the new video card has three power inputs. Oh, Oh, so you had to find the other cables so somewhere. So I had to find the other cables. Uh, I had yeah. to take my whole case apart to get to those cables and unclip the zip ties and <laughs> pull out the thing. And it worked. But yeah. had I not felt comfortable doing that, like if I'm just a young kid whose parents bought him a super nice PC and he doesn't have that building experience. You're driving to Best yeah. Buy because you don't know what the heck you're doing, right? right? Or you're calling the company again <laughs> or you're stuck. Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah. made no effort on their part to say, Here's what you're going to get. Here's a set of instructions, any, Mm -hmm. nothing. So I don't know if that's my fault because maybe they're geared toward people who know how to build a PC. Maybe Maybe they just knew how smart you were. That's what it was. was giving you full credit. all true. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't know if it's fair to blame them for that or if maybe... I just didn't realize they're not uh, trying to approach the wider audience. They're just narrowly mm. targeted at people who are comfortable with working inside a PC. I don't know. I think they should have given some instructions on that, especially if it's a different card than what you had. Yeah. I think it's negligent of them not to at least make you aware that, hey, you'll need an extra, you know, pull this extra power cable out when you install it or something, you know? Whether they think you are you have the aptitude or not, instructions are a standard part of any kind of, exactly. any yeah. kind of support, right? Because if you don't give them instructions, they do it wrong, you have no to blame but yourself so yeah yeah and i could have easily just plugged up the two power inputs that i had it doesn't work and powered (laughs) it on and fried it you know i don't know what would happen or you said oh it doesn't work again when you call Mm -hmm. them and go through the whole thing again right the whole thing so i'm disappointed in skytech obviously i won't buy from them ever again that i can think of at least just because of the poor customer experience Mm -hmm. i don't blame you But the PC itself, the parts, now that I have a working video card again, they are solid. Uh, Last night I was uh, playing Red Dead Redemption 2, which John, to go back several episodes, was the second game I bought that time that I couldn't remember. Oh, you couldn't remember the second game you bought. It was Red (laughs) Dead. Okay, got it. (laughs) So I was playing Red Dead. That's a deep cut. Payoff, you know, episodes (laughs) later. That's great. I I keep everything on track. Uh, So I was playing that last night. It was beautiful. Played it for, I don't know, an hour and a half or so. Highest settings, I assume. Highest settings. <laughs> yeah, just enjoyed the crap out of it. And it was the first time in, I don't know, six months or more that I've sat down and played a video game of that caliber and enjoyed it and felt like everything was working well together to allow me to enjoy that game. Well, good. I'm glad you finally got there. This is like an 
$1,800 card if you just buy it retail. It's crazy expensive. But really? I look, Holy right? cow. Something like that? Yeah. Yeah. So Nuts. I gave you a couple of links there, Mo. One for the yeah. Tachi X version and one for the uh, Phantom Gaming version. So that way you can offer oh, both yeah, to both our listeners. The, uh, <laughs> the Phantom Gaming version, you can find it out there on Amazon even for like $1,500. So it's wow. two or $300 cheaper than the Tachi yep. X. It, so it really just depends. And I looked, I found a website that compared both those two cards together. And the only reason that the Phantom Gaming was uh, rated slightly higher was the port on the back. Everything the else was exactly the same. USB C. Okay. Wow. So maybe here at the end of the year, a ending, happy ending, it's Christmas Decent miracle. Ending, at least. Uh, definitely Christmas miracle and Christmas <laughs> present that I <laughs> Christmas enjoy, miracle. For sure. There we go. <laughs> God bless us, everyone. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, I don't know if your next object is tiny or if it's large or if it's expensive or cheap, but I'm kind of interested to find out what you want to talk about this week. Sure. Uh, so not too long ago, we did our backtrack all about Batman 66, oh, which yeah. we mm-hmm. really enjoyed. We got good response from our audience. Uh, over on Facebook, several people that follow us there, uh, one of the guys that follows us pretty regularly, he got really into Batman 66. Like he knew it, but then he started posting memes about it and remembering all <laughs> the different things we talked about. It was really great to see us kind of spark this memory. And then one of the things he shared and he tagged me in, he said, you should check this out. And I'm like, I don't know, what is it? So there's a company called Pinmates. Not familiar with the company before, but they put out this classic TV series Batmobile, which is classic meaning the 66 Batman, right? We all enjoy Batman 66. I'm not a particularly big Batman fan or even a comic book fan for that matter, as you know. I like it casually, but I don't collect memorabilia or anything. Uh, As much as we like Batman 66, even that might not have put me over the top. But I did go and look this thing up. We'll put a link in the show notes. It's made by this company called Pinmates. They're called that because remember the Fisher Price little people, like the wooden yeah, people? Cylinder with dudes. The, the yeah. Plastic? Yes. Like yeah. Playmobil and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I right. 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 Yeah. And they were called pins because they were actually modeled after clothespin dolls that people used to make during the depression for their kids. Ah, so they were, okay. oh, so they were called clothespin dolls, but they were actually molded out of wood. What Pinmates as a company is doing is they're buying up, think like pop vinyl, buying up all these, the rights to all these IPs and putting out these pop vinyls. Pinmates are making little wooden toys just like those Fisher Price clothespin toys. Oh. And this set is a wooden toy, not plastic, not metal, the not, car, everything? not heat shrunk. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So what you get in this thing, in this box is a wooden Batmobile, limited 900 pieces in this limited edition, apparently. A little... <laughs> A little people, pin mates, Batman and Robin. Okay, that by itself is worth the it. The Batman, especially, <laughs> he has like the white painted on eyebrows we talked about. Oh, he yeah. has like a blue frame around his nose. By itself, a cute collectible that I thought I would buy and then maybe give away or eBay or something. Now I think I'm going to keep it. The box <laughs> even has a play set that you make out of the box. It has a bat pole they can slide down, a little <laughs> hole in the box. It has the wall that drops down so you can drive the Batmobile out the side of the box. Oh, that's pretty cool. I I did a quick video of this over on uh, our YouTube channel. I'll give you Mo a link to throw yeah. down in the show notes and look at it. It's a simple little toy. I think it was only like $22. It was oh, not wow. a big deal. And then I found out they were limited. So on the heels of that Batman 66, if you are a Batman fan or just a Batman 66 fan in general, what a cute little collectible that's not run of the mill. That's not, no. you know, another t-shirt or another pop vinyl or whatever. You take a look at the video. In fact, see what you think. <laughs> Even for somebody that's not a Batman fan, it was a pretty neat addition to the collection. So I enjoyed picking it up. Yeah, I just added it to my Amazon cart. So I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious what else they have then. If they're buying all this IP to do other stuff. They have tons of stuff. Yeah. Well, they have the whole Super Friends collection that they can do. Oh, you can really? buy them individually. Oh, yeah. Wait, which Super? With the with the Wonder Twins or with the... Like, meanwhile, like like, like the cartoon <laughs> Super yeah. Friends, they have those, oh. those style costumes. Yeah. They're buying up lots of IPs and making these cute little figures to collect wow yeah i feel a rabbit hole that's gonna fill up another like that's what happened to me it was a listener that sent me down a rabbit hole in my closet because i'm never gonna have room to display all this stuff (laughs) so is this like listener revenge or something (laughs) yeah so you should check it out check the video check out the uh, the link see what you think well what about you oh right so uh you just took a vacation is this some tech that came out of your vacation what's going on it totally is okay these days you know with covid omicron all that stuff going on and talk about the whole post you know i guess this is in line with your old south park thing. Yeah. In order for me to come back into the country, this is weird, I had to take a COVID test. Really? That's fair. Yeah. 
and I, but I was kind of curious, like how do they expect me to do it? They expect me to go to a pharmacy, and like go to a clinic or pharmacy, Guatemala, or whatever, right? yeah, yeah. go to a clinic. No, there's a at home personal test you could bring with you. And I was again, it's like trying to figure out how this worked. Is that you get this app for your phone and it has a two way video with a somebody watching you take the test, huh? To make sure that you don't cheat it, that you do everything properly. There's some bar, like QR codes you scan and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then like when you do your test, you have to you know you show them that, and then it takes 15 minutes to get results. But your camera has been pointing at your test for the entire 15 minutes. <laughs> really? Yeah. And then they cut. They they tell you to come back in like 14 minutes. And let me tell you that is the most stressful 15 minutes <laughs> because am I going to get to go home? If you don't pass a test, you're quarantined for 10 days, not in the United States. And so you had to do that from the other country or something. Yeah. You're quarantined. The United States will not let you in for 10 days. And I'm guessing you have to wait till the day of your flight or something to uh, do the this. Day before. The day before. Yep. And that's recent. It used to be yeah. 72 hours before you could do the test, but now you have to do it the day before. And they, they give you some leeway on it. Like, cause our flight was a Monday afternoon. And we did it like Sunday morning. For as soon as we got up, I'm like, we got to do this mm -hmm. as soon as possible <laughs> to minimize any chance. Right. But yeah, it's the whole cotton swab, scratching your brain. You got to do it yourself. And they Ugh. watch to make sure you do that. Wow. So you were sitting in Guatemala, ready to come home the next day. Yep. Waiting for and the results so, of this test. So where, where did you get this test? Was it something they shipped to you or is that or is that your tech? What's the thing? Some different sites uh, will sell it. We got this one from emed.com. Okay. And it's called Binex Now. Uh, I think it's just a brand name or something. Okay. And, and you could buy like a six pack for like 150 bucks for six tests. Ooh. Well, <laughs> but that includes like you, you'll find cheaper tests on Amazon. But what that includes is the whole somebody monitoring you, make sure you do the test right. Like their tests are so you're, you're prepaying for the person that's going right. to have to assist you. Is this then. the test like that the government says you have to yes. take this one? Uh, it's one of. Okay. So they have a they couple have a of different choices. Yeah, they have a yeah. couple of this one, but this is one of the authorized tests. What if you don't need six tests? What if you only need one test because you're just <laughs> by yourself do they have a one test option i don't know i went to the site just before the show just to check and right now you can only buy it in a six pack and there's a waiting list because of all the it, whoa and a waiting stuff. list yeah like oh. they don't have enough tests right now so i think it's like four weeks now to even get one is there an expiration on the test like can you buy it way in advance of a trip so that way you can mitigate the waiting list i think they last like a year or so so okay. you can definitely oh, yeah. get it okay. ahead of time because i've got to get one now for my wife she's got a ticket that she's been sitting on to go back to the philippines she's oh. been sitting on it for two years because of all the regulations and rules oh sure now knowing this i'm like okay honey we got to spend 150 dollars because you got to have a test in order to get back into the country hey, apparently. mo might have a spare one he didn't need out of his six pack <laughs> check with him <laughs> he cut you a deal yeah <laughs> mo's gonna start selling his covid Off tests market. on ebay aftermarket covid tests aftermarket from mo. COVID. <laughs> guarantee pass you know <laughs> <laughs> but they actually have a seal on them you have to show them the seal then you break the seal i mean they wow so that's what you're really paying for and it's, the thing that's interesting is that the technology now like without phones and all that the technology we have today, I'm not sure how this would You work. couldn't do that. Yeah, no, we right. couldn't do this because they send you like a QR code. And when I went to the airport, that's where I showed them. And mm -hmm. they scanned yep. the QR code. It brought up my results. And like, okay, you're good to go. Yep. So the QR code was your results that you had to show to the airline. Yes. Wow. And they asked me for it. They said, do you have your results of your COVID test? I'm like, here you go. You know? Man. This would almost have been an outdated tech toy, except for Omicron now, which case yeah, exactly. is a fresh new tech toy. <laughs> it's not a whole brand new thing. People <laughs> care about right. it. It's something new. But I have to say, like the process of doing it, all this stuff, it was as painless, I guess, as you can make it. I mean, yeah. you can only yeah, make it so painless, enough. right? You are sticking cot cotton swab through your head. And the test was pretty simple, but you know, it did work. And I was able to come home, so I can't And you got to come home. All right. Well, that's good news, at least. Yeah. So it was interesting. <laughs> all right. Stick around. When we get back, we're getting into some games. Hello, and welcome to Novel Conversations, a podcast about the world's greatest stories. I'm your host, Frank Lavallo, and for each episode of Novel Conversations, I talk to two readers about one book, and together, we summarize the story for you. We introduce you to the characters, we tell you what happens to them, and we read from the book along the way. So if you love hearing a good story, you're in the right place. Our ninth season is coming this fall. Tune in to hear from some of the all-time great authors, Charles Dickens, Jules Verne, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and more. Subscribe to Novel Conversations wherever you listen to podcasts. You're listening to Gen X Grown Up. But if you have a friend who's not yet listening, why not? Tell them about us. They'll thank you later. 
How do you prepare for trigonometry, the French Revolution, and Moby Dick, all on the same morning? Have a Thomas's English muffin. Thomas's taste delicious, wholesome. They're light enough to keep you moving, yet give you just what you need to make it through the morning. Of course, it wouldn't hurt to hit the books, too. Thomas's English muffins. Every day should start out this good. This is the main event of the podcast. For the three in attendance locally and the millions listening around the world, ladies and gentlemen, it's time! I am extremely hyped because I can finally play video games again. <laughs> Woo, it's about time. You can play good video games again. <laughs> right, I can play right. good video games again. Not just 2D indie games. Not just right. off a USB-C video card <laughs> thing. Yeah. Uh, no, so it's that time of year. We talked about it a few episodes ago. Steam seems to have the seasonal sales yeah. that they do. They, they must mm-hmm. have four of them a year because I, I now <laughs> yeah, know true. of they at do. least three, and I can't imagine they would leave the fourth one out. But the one that's going on right now as you're listening to this episode if you're listening to it on day one of our drop is the steam winter sale oh, it's going yeah. on until january 5th oh so still time oh, yeah, a little there's time. still several days that you can go in there and jump and enjoy some stuff if you have things on a wish list you've probably already been getting emails from steam <laughs> saying yeah. hey mm-hmm. your thing just <laughs> dropped in price come spend some money with us <laughs> And there are a ton of games, way too many to mention. There are whole gaming companies that have all their games on yeah. sale, all the way mm-hmm. down to big ticket AAA titles that just have one. Like uh, I know some of our listeners are big into the sports ones. So the Madden game, the 2022 one, that one's on sale for like 40% oh, wow. off, I think, or something like that. Nice. Yep. The Red Dead Redemption that I was talking about earlier, that thing's on sale still. Deathloop is on sale again. Uh, there are just a ton of games out there left uh what's the left for dead new the, bad back for, for blood. blood back for, back blood. for yeah. blood back yeah. for blood that one's on sale again almost everything in my wish list is on sale right now <laughs> wow <laughs> have you pulled the trigger on anything yet the hardest part is that i'm broke and i can't afford to buy oh no so you haven't <laughs> pulled the trigger on anything so yet. i haven't no. yeah but if you want a good sale, I think this is the best one going until January 5th. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the winter sale always seems like the biggest one. And maybe it's because I'm off work and I can I pay more <laughs> attention to it. But it seems like lots and lots of really big stuff on sale rather than just smaller stuff. You're right. I saw huge franchises, you know, companies putting mm-hmm. their whole portfolio on sale. That's dangerous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and it's I think the winter and the summer are the two biggest sales that they do each year. And I wonder mm-hmm. if it's not because games are mostly targeted toward a younger audience who may be in school and those are two times of the year when they're not in school so maybe Maybe that's why those are their two biggest sales but they've got quite a bit out there i don't think you'll have a hard time finding something that you'll enjoy for a steeply discounted price everything seems to be at least 30 percent off i've been browsing yeah (laughs) and and, and it's like yeah i'm gonna buy like games i probably never play or forget i have or (laughs) yeah (laughs) because it's just too good a deal not to get it right but you got them so cheap mo i know i'm saving money i guess <laughs> that's right <laughs> i can't not buy it i'll be losing money if i don't exactly buy it. <laughs> that's the rationale yep. yeah if you're a person who games on a pc because if you're on xbox or playstation this is not the sale for you yeah. it's not gonna help you yeah. but i primarily game on pc and that's where i look for most of my purchases so this steam winter sale I don't think you can make a mistake by finding something on there that you've been wanting to try. Now you can try it mm-hmm. for 30% off or 40% <laughs> off. Or, mm-hmm. There's yeah. even yep. some games down there that are under a dollar. Yeah. Jeez. This started out at 10 or more. Yeah, they did yeah. crush them down to 70, 80, 90% off. I've seen some. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> but I have not been playing a game other than Red Dead Redemption 2, which I talked about earlier. John, however, has been playing a game and I think I you've have. even done some reviews on it. I did, indeed. Well, so Atari has many titles on sale on the Steam Winter Sale, mm-hmm. in fact. <laughs> this is the fourth game in a series that Atari has done. This one, not yet on sale. It's still full price, which is only $10. But they started like two years ago doing this recharged series. You remember oh, they yeah, did yeah, Missile yeah. Command Recharged. Mm-hmm. And then earlier in this year, they did Centipede. Then around Halloween time, they did Black Widow, that vector game. All three of those that I just mentioned are on sale. 
But what I want to talk about is the latest one I picked up and spoiler alert, probably the best one of the series so far. Uh-huh. And that's Asteroids Recharged. Oh, I love the original Asteroids. So, yeah, I'm curious what they did to this to make it better. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I'm going to stop at saying it's better than the original Asteroids. You know, that's like saying, uh, you know, the Ghostbusters Afterlife was better than the original Ghostbusters. No, no, you're not going to go better than that. You just want to do something that does the original service and does something interesting with it. Okay. And I think that's what they did. They didn't do with all the recharged titles necessarily, but with the Asteroids. uh, So the initial Asteroids is a pretty stark game. Came out in 1979. There's not a lot of gaming whiz bangery you could do into a game. So you have a ship that rotates, you can shoot, you have bunch of rocks and you have ufos every once in a while and that's pretty much it so it was a pretty blank canvas to work with for this reimagining well what they do at atari is they've licensed a couple of developers uh, adam vision and sneaky box to do the development for them and they just they have oversight uh, and generally what they do is they make it all vectory and look like it's neon and they add power-ups so you can I remember centipede you could grab something that would let you shoot faster or would let you put everything in slow motion or whatever and so this is asteroids in that same environment environment where you have, you still have asteroids floating out there. They've added mm-hmm. extra large asteroids that are like a quarter of the screen in size. They're enormous. And oh my they, God. They smash down littler things. And you have uh, power-ups that are kind of the big differentiator, where is, uh, you know, you get one where you can shoot fast or bullets come out of the front and sides of your ship, oh, or you have yeah. exploding bombs that they, they blow up, turn into a little vortex that sucks in rocks, all kinds of creative power-ups. The real difference here from a standpoint is it is a high score race, but like the last couple couple of titles, you get one ship to get your very best possible score with. When you die, you die. Ooh. That's it. Ooh. Uh, which okay. which makes the co-op of this game even better because they have a couch co-op, which isn't online co-op, but you can play over the internet using Parsec. We've talked about several times on this show. Yeah. Right. And I have. And that's the best way to play this because though you only have one life at a time, if you die, a new power-up comes into play. If you can survive long enough and grab it, it'll bring your friend back to life and you can continue ah. to fight and fight ah. and fight. Okay. Yeah. And so with the additional asteroids, with the additional types of UFOs and way that they shoot at you, with the additional power-ups, and on, on top of that, just the the way that they have respected the source material of this one more than they did in the other ones, I think, because it just feels more like the original. It feels like asteroids. Definitely. I gave it a video review, as you said, George, and we'll put a link to it over on uh, over in the show notes that so you can go and look at the, the review. But I rated it the highest I've rated any of these so far. I love the Recharge series. Oh, fantastic. So of the Recharge series, then I was going to ask the question, which one is your favorite? It sounds like this is head and shoulders above the rest? I think it is. I think the first one was my favorite. Missile Command, I think, was awesome. But it was kind of a mobile game. And when they moved it to consoles and stuff, it wasn't as cool because it was designed for touch. And the other ones had little little problems. Centipede had the control problem. Black Widow was fine. It just wasn't a favorite of mine. So I I wasn't as interested. But this one for sure is the best of the series so far. And it's at 10 bucks. If you're an Asteroids fan, you'll get Asteroids fun out of this, which I think is the important thing. That's the secret sauce. Can I get Asteroids fun? And you can. Nice. I'm Ken Harbaugh, host of Warriors in Their Own Words, a podcast that presents the unvarnished, unsanitized truth of what we have asked of those who defend this nation. As a country, we need these stories more than ever. Stories from Americans who have borne the battle, including 30-year-old remastered interviews with veterans from World War I recounting their time in the trenches of Europe and with veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and from our most recent conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other battlefields Americans may never have heard of. Hear their stories by listening to Warriors in Their Own Words wherever you find podcasts. If you're a diehard Gen X grown-up, you can pledge your support by clicking join on YouTube or by becoming a patron at genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. Everyone knows Vandy Camps has a line on fresh tasting fish with our light fillets, our breaded and batter dipped fish, and today's catch fillets. They all taste fresh because they're frozen fresh, and you'll taste it in every bite once you catch them. Did you get Vandy Camps fish? I think they're getting tired. Vandy Camps, the freshest ideas in frozen fish.
Before we wind it up for episode 114, you know, we always like to take just a couple of seconds here toward the end to talk about the things we're looking at now or looking forward to between now and the next time we get together. Of course, Christmas is tomorrow for us recording just Mm -hmm. in the past for you. New Year's is here, but lots of stuff on the horizon that we're looking at. Mo, what about you? What do you got coming up? I mean, first, you know, obviously I think we all are spending time with our family, enjoying that, the Christmas spirit and the time. Okay. I have to say, I throw it out there, right? I had to throw it out there. It's contractual. <laughs> the other thing is uh, a break from work. We're shut down. I think all of us have a next, like uh, some time off from work coming up mm-hmm. or already on, which mm, yep. I really need. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. But on a more practical note, um, what I'm really looking forward to is the book of Boba Fett coming out December 29th. Aha. Uh-huh. So it should be out by the time this drops, actually. It should be is out. Is that a Disney Plus again, right? Disney the Plus. Series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. From the last episode, The Mandalorian, where they introduced Boba Fett, I am so looking forward to that thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it just looks like it's going to be damn cool. Well, and it's by the same team that does The Mandalorian. Yep. So you know mm-hmm. it's probably going to be freaking awesome. Oh, yeah, Quality. for sure. Yep. I mean, I still, to this day, like that end scene when you see Boba Fett sitting sitting on like the throne on Jabba's throne. Yeah. Yeah. With the girl like next to her with the, with drinking the blue liquor with the gun. I'm like, mm-hmm. I want that poster. That, is, looks, <laughs> that looks freaking amazing. And so that's why I'm really, really looking forward to you. So how about you, John? What you got looking forward to? Yeah. So uh, a lot of Star Trek I mentioned on Paramount plus uh, Star Trek discovery is going to into a hiatus mid season, mm. but the return of prodigy is coming oh, at the same time, okay. January 6th. So we talked a little bit about prodigy, which is the, Nickelodeon Studios made for kids, Star Trek, the holographic Janeway and stuff. It was a slow start. I initially said, I'm not sure if I like it or not. I think I like it. I'm not a super fan of it, but enjoying (laughs) it. But they finally explained what's going on with the ship and what its superpower is and what's really cool and why it's called the what it's called. And then they ended. No more episodes. Like, what's going on? Well, they took a break, but it's coming back January 6th. So more Star Trek Prodigy right around the corner. Uh, you mentioned time off. I get to go on a tradition that I haven't had for years. I used to always, when my daughter was, you know, 10, 11, 12 for a long time, every year between Christmas and New Year's, we take this daddy-daughter vacation to somewhere, to mm-hmm. Boston or Manhattan or Chicago. Which or- Alaska, actually, didn't you? Like, went to a went to Anchorage one time. Yeah. That's right. And we haven't done that in years. A because she's a grown ass person with responsibilities, <laughs> and B the pandemic. But oh yeah, uh, yeah, mm. yeah. Just despite the the surge, we do have. Assuming they don't get canceled, we do have travel plans to make another daddy daughter trip. We haven't done it in like four years, so I'm really excited to do that. Nice on the media front. <laughs> The return of another goofy series that I love. Back in the early 2000s, there was a kind of a mockumentary series called Reno 911. It was uh, Thomas Lennon and uh, a lot of comics, comedians, it was kind of like a semi incompetent sheriff's department. Uh, well, they have a new film that just released. I haven't got to watch it yet, but it's called Reno 911, The Hunt for QAnon. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Going right out of the headlines. They're seeking the mysterious Q who's in charge of all oh, these conspiracies. Uh, yeah. It, this It's just an excuse for more sketch comedy from these it comic is. geniuses that are great and these characters again. So, yeah, I'm eager to see, eager to see that. That's, uh, that's probably going to watch that on the plane, in fact, when I'm done editing the podcast. So. Nice. <laughs> yep. Reno 911 is back. George? How about you? What's coming up? Uh, well, I think it's a recurring theme. You know, we're all on break, so I'm looking forward to recharging my batteries. And I don't yeah, mean in yeah. a computer or a calculator or anything like that. I mean my personal <laughs> batteries. I've been experimenting with uh, something that our listeners might have heard in our commercials, and I'll give a full review of it when I'm done with the whole process. But it's been really helping a lot with that recharging mm-hmm. my batteries thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm looking forward to finally getting back to doing some writing during this break and getting back into it. I've kind of finished off some work projects or at least gotten them to a point where I don't give a shit anymore. And so I can, <laughs> okay. yeah, there you go. I can go back to my personal life. Wasn't well, that how you felt at the beginning too, though? I mean, you really didn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. It's come full circle. <laughs> it's full circle. Um, so that and playing some games. But the thing I'm looking most forward to is the thing I've been looking forward to for the last Uh-oh. two episodes. Cobra Kai oh. season four, December 31st, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here. First, third, second, whatever. I am super looking forward to the series. I, I know we all are enjoying oh, yeah. the series. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure oh, that yeah. Mo and John are yep. looking forward to it as well. I just get to 
to claim dibs on it every time we talk about it, which that's okay. In the me. next yeah. episode, all yours, I will man. definitely be talking about it. And I'm just going <laughs> to warn you now, I'm not going to worry about spoilers. So you guys need to get out there and watch it. If, <laughs> Binge. If you're Binge, playing on it, because hey, I'm going to be talking episode. about this storyline because I won't be able to stop myself. New Year's Eve, I will watch every single episode, maybe <laughs> twice. <laughs> Happy New Year. Shut up. <laughs> exactly. Be quiet. <laughs> I don't care about Dick Clark. Isn't he dead? I'm Get watching that Cobra Kai. away from me. I'm watching Cobra Kai. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. A lot of great stuff. A lot of chance to relax a little bit here at the end of the year going into 2022. God knows what 2022 is going to bring. So we need to be ready for it. That is going to wrap it up for this episode of the show. Don't worry. We'll be back in two weeks with another one. But next week is our backtrack episode where we pick a single nostalgic topic and dig in deep. We have had a lot of requests from a lot of folks over on Discord saying, why have you guys not covered anything about the wrestling scene growing up in Gen Well, there's a reason, right? (laughs) There is a reason because I don't know shit about the wrestling scene. Do do you, do you, Mo, know much about it? No, I know shit about it. Very little. Well, Mo, listener, you're in luck because George does not have that problem. He is an expert (laughs) on the wrestling scene. What is coming up on the backtrack next week, George? Yeah, on the backtrack next week, we're going to talk about one of the most controversial times of the modern era of the wrestling genre, and that is the Monday Night Wrestling Wars. Two major powerhouse companies in the mid 90s got together to go after ratings by going back and forth behind the scenes in front of the camera. They broke kayfabe. They did all this crazy stuff. And we're going to talk all about it <laughs> next week. It's going to be a blast. I've been looking forward to doing a wrestling episode. And I think this one is a great one to start with. Wow. I, okay. I, 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 I think I'm going to be educated. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. To, it's outside of my comfort zone, and we're going to rely on George. He is going to bring his expertise and yeah. decades of paying attention to the wrestling world. <laughs> uh, so if you've been looking for it, some wrestling coming up with a backtrack nice. next week. So you, like Mo and I, do not want to miss that one for sure. <laughs> so we'll see you then. Until then, I am John. George, thank you so much for being here, man. Yes, sir. Mo, you know I appreciate you. Oh, man, always fun. Fourth listener, though, it's you we all appreciate most of all, and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Take care, everybody. Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. Unacceptable for grown-ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown-up. Oh, he skipped the word Artari? He did. <laughs> oh, did I? Did I really? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christina Yerling Biro, host of the podcast Pop Culture Confidential. Join me as I go way behind the scenes with some of the most influential people in entertainment and media. Hear actors such as Succession's Brian Cox talk about his favorite characters to play. There always has to be a mystery. The audience have to be in a situation where they want to know what's going on. Meet studio execs like Pixar chief Pete Docter and learn his secret on how he makes us cry. Emotion is our first language. And so many others who are defining popular culture, from Obama speechwriter David Litt to Top Chef host Padma Lakshmi. We don't often think about food politically or we don't want to, but it really is. Join me. Search for Pop Culture Confidential wherever you get your podcasts.